the speed limit increases, but immediately you've got cars braking ahead, so there's no point in bundling. And the reason there's no braking is we can see cyclists. Cyclists, yeah. But we can also see there that the bend, the road bends around. Did you see the tractor just up on the hillside there? A couple yeah. of agricultural vehicles. And if you look across the stone wall, you'll get a view to see the cars on coming. They're signaling to turn off, so there's no point in rushing an overtake. We'll let the cyclists just gently get out of the way, and we can then move on without even needing to add risk into our driving plan. Checking the mirrors as we move on. The speed limit rises to 60. But note the mud on the road, and we're warned of cattle crossing. Is that where the cattle cross? Looks highly likely that it is. So that could on a wet day be particularly slippery. So now we can start bringing the speed in. What are these continuous white lines telling us? No overtaking. Actually, yeah, it actually means no crossing, but yeah, the, by implication, yeah, you don't overtake. And why is that? Why are they there? It's dangerous, I Yeah, visibility is reduced. Good. Do you know what this continuous line means down the outside of the road? The edge of the road, going past them. It's actually an edge marker. So, I said that. Sorry. Edge right, of yeah. the road. An edge of the road, yeah, that's brilliant. Next hazard? Crossroads. Crossroads and the loss of visibility. So what, have we, what would we have done there? What was I doing? Slowing down, checking the mirrors. Yeah, check the mirrors first before slowing. Know how close, so at the moment, the car behind us is a long way back. Similarly here, loss of visibility. I'm checking my mirrors. If I did need to anchor up, I know that I've got loads of room behind. If somebody was closer behind, and was tucked up behind me closely, what would I be thinking about then? How would I approach that differently? Slow down and show some brake lights. Good, yeah. Another warning of cattle crossing. What's on the corner there? Just see it. At the petrol station. Yeah, and what do people do at petrol stations? Pull out. Yeah, pull in or pull out. So is that truck. Look at its wheels. You see the spokes of the wheels, they're not moving, are they? So it wasn't edging forward. As soon as that those wheels start to move, you want to be really getting eye contact with the driver, checking what their intentions are. Two, there's two cars ahead of us, then what's the vehicle in front of that? Shopping lorry. Shopping lorry. So where's that likely to be going? Pulling into Kaiser's. Yeah. So it wouldn't be a huge surprise if uh, that stopped or turned down one of these driveways. Dogs on its knee. Considering a signal, well, I don't need to show brakes because the car behind is a good distance. Crossroads are now clear, we can see through it. So we're back on the gas. As you see, by keeping this distance from the car ahead, to the moment, on the type of road we're on, there is no opportunity to overtake. The speed limit, the road yeah. markings, everything dictate that we wouldn't be overtaking. So there's no point in being right up behind the car in front of us. We're all travelling at the same speed, they're not getting anywhere any faster than us, and we're not going to get there faster by attaching ourselves to their bumper. Yeah. What we would do is, if I got right up close behind him, now if he shows brake lights like he's doing now, I can come off the gas, and it's a very comfortable ride. If I'm right up behind him, every time he dabs his brakes, I'm having to react and dab mine. It's not comfortable for the driver in front, you're intimidating them, and causing distraction to them. Yeah. So for all those reasons, we don't connect ourselves with somebody else's journey, we can keep a good safe distance. What's 
the next housing we can see over the road here? Um, hello? Yeah, white car in the lay-by or junction. We're also on a bus route. And I think there's a temporary hazard sign we just about to see. Yeah, there it is. What's that warning us of? Slippery road surface. Good. So how would we deal with a potentially slippery road surface? Speed down. Yep, speed down and we're then very measured with any inputs. So any braking or any acceleration we keep nice and smooth. Because if it's a slippery surface the tyre's adhesion won't be as good. So we don't put any brake demands on the tyres if we can help it. Um, 
and you would anticipate that behavior will remain pretty consistent. Um, if it had been another car or motorbike, we would then start assessing how they were, were driving. So now we've got good visibility, long straight road, and now's the time to get on with it and move the car along. Slight loss of visibility here over the brow of the hill. Constantly for frequently scanning our mirrors for motorcyclists. And then we've just had a sign of him warned as a staggered left and right junction. So again, immediately check the mirrors. Do you know what this central hatched area means? You shouldn't go into it. Yeah, it discourages you from using it, so it's designed to keep the two two sections of traffic apart. Legally, you can use it if it is safe to do so. But that puts the onus very much on you being very sure that it is safe to do so. So it's not prohibitive. If it was had a solid white line, then it would be. But because it's broken white lines, you are prohibited from crossing it, but you are discouraged from doing so. Get nice into the pub car park. And again, out of town pubs, potential for drink drivers, so very mindful. There's your motorbikes there. We've got one emerging on the left, can you see? So I'm checking my mirrors now. Now the motorcyclist is gone. And watch the watch the wheels, see how they move slightly? Yeah. Yeah, he's actually rolling backwards there. But you see by looking at the spokes of the alloy wheel, or the drive, and again looking at the driver for eye contact, is he looking at you? If he's looking the other way and his wheels are moving forward. No, you want to be getting concerned at that point and covering the brake pedal. So again, that's the car that we've been following for a number of miles now and we've still kept a safe distance. You see, they're no further up the road than we are. We're all getting there, we're all going. Yeah. So that's what we were saying about it was pointless being tucked up behind them. So I'm checking my mirrors now, centre mirror, left mirror, holding off on a signal because I believe this is the second exit we're going. White van's coming in, it's clear, we've got our view. Yes, it is second exit, so checking the left hand mirror now and signalling now. Same 
saying this sandwich has been following us for some time. So again, we're very comfortable with that driver. Scanning the right mirror for any motorcyclist. Looking right down the centre line here for any motor motorcyclists. So what that little blue sign means off, off there on the... So I'm on the brakes. Take the gear for that speed. Final look, assess, decide, and we're going to go. That's the decision. Signal. Now we signal. Well done, having checked the left hand mirror. Excellent. Again, eyes up. Still the same grey car behind us. So we're comfortable with them. So we've got the second exit. Now this one is actually it's a bit unusual. It is 12 o'clock, but it is more of a right-hand approach on this one, just because of the when you look yeah. at it, physical construction is actually beyond 12 o'clock. So we're going to approach right lane, right signal to the centre disc, left mirror, left signal on exit. New road, new mirrors, still the grey Nissan Juke. Seeing down the road now. Cyclists. Good, and they're a good distance away. This black car is the hazard he could have turned, which she could have turned across our path. So that was in terms of prioritising the hazard. Cyclists are a long way away from us, weren't at risk. So very quickly get what is the imminent danger. But here, these cyclists, yeah, absolutely, they're coming right towards us. Position of safety, having checked the right hand mirror, they're young cyclists. So we keep out wide. We've got one going away from us. What might they do? Cross without looking. Yeah, just jump off the pavement. What did that red sign say that we Glory's just passed? Glory's turning. Excellent, well done. So cyclists quite often will just drop off the pavement back onto the main road. We're going to turn left at the next roundabout. Centre mirror, left mirror, left signal. So that's mirror signal positioning slightly to the left. In the speed phase, which is just a lift of the gas actually, there's no need to brake here. Second gear to match the speed we've reduced to. Immediately, who has priority here? Uh, us. Yeah, and there's nobody there anyway, but we checked. Check behind, so we now have nobody behind us. So the grey Nissan went straight on, and we are clear behind. So first thing I'm going to do, the yeah, what am I going to do? Check the mirrors. Now we can accelerate. Where's our limit point? Going down the hill. Yeah, now where's our limit point? Right at the end. Right at the end, so we can really put the gas on. But you've got an offside risk of that little 